Hmm? Uh, we look at the second case. The second case is particle projected vertically downwards, which is also known as horizontal motion. Particle projected vertically downwards or horizontal motion. That is the case you are now above the ground. Let us say you are at a height. Then you drop an object. That object is all falling. Now let us look at the uh, schematic diagrams here, just a sketch. Let us say there is at the top, there is an object at the top here. This object is at the top. And somebody is releasing this object to fall to the ground here. The object that is at the top has now been released and that object is falling to the ground. Now where that object is from the ground is known as the height. That is also the height above the ground. Where that object is above the ground is known as the height. Now what comes to mind is anytime object is falling, anytime the object is falling, A changes to positive G. S also changes to H. Now if that is the case, if that particular uh, rule holds, anytime the object is released, when you release the object, U is equal to zero at this point. U is equal to zero. In that other case, we said V is equal to zero at the highest point. Here, wherever the object is released or dropped, U is equal to zero at that point. No more V. So anytime the object is falling, U is equal to zero at the point where the object is released. Now, if that is the case, let us uh, look at the basic equations. We have developed some basic equations a few minutes ago. We said one is S equals U square plus 2A, 2AS. Let us, two, S equals UT plus half AT square. We said S equals UT plus half AT square. That was the equation I, I wrote a few minutes ago. So if I now want to change some factors here, S changes to H. Wherever I see S, I change that to H. U is here, T uh, plus half. Wherever I see A, I put positive G. So the same positive G is there. And then I have T square here. T square. Now we know very well that U is equal to zero. Anytime the object is released from a point above the ground, it is falling now, so U is equal to zero. When I put U equal to zero, I have H equals zero times T here becomes zero here because U is already zero plus uh, one times G times T square is the same as T G T square. One multiplied by anything is the same as the same thing divided by the two here. So I have H equals gt square zero plus anything is the same thing if i say zero plus five is five so if i say zero plus gt square over two is the same as gt square divided by two so what we are saying here is the height anytime the object is falling the height it takes the object to come to the ground or the height covered by the object where it is falling is calculated using the gravity multiplied by the time square everything over two that is the time of the height of fall of that particular object let us say you are interested in the time taken by the object to fall to the ground. You want to get the time taken by the object to come fall to the ground. If you want to get the time taken to fall to the ground, we still use this equation here. We already know that H equals GT square divided by 2. So what I will do here is to cross multiply. What we do is to cross multiply here. And when we cross multiply, we have 2 times H, that is 2H, equals gt square is here because the value here is one one times gt square is gt square now what we do here is to get t when you want to get t square you divide both sides by g anytime you want to divide t square you divide both sides by g you have 2h divided by g gt square divided by g this cancels this so t square what we have for t square is 2h over g 2h divided by 2h here divided by g but in mathematics anytime there is a square you take the square root on both sides as far as you have a square here you take the square on both sides so t square which is the same as 2h over g because of the square here i take the square root here and take the square root here t square cancels this small t become square root of 2h divided by g so anytime you want to find the height the object the time the object takes to fall to the ground when the object is released, the time it takes to fall to the ground, you say small t, small t equals square root of 2h over g. Let us now move further to another case where the object is now on the ground. Have in mind when the object falls, anytime you release an object to fall to the ground, the moment the object reaches the ground surface, it will move. Except when you are in swampy areas, that will be the time the object tries to sink. But if the object you are not in swampy area, the moment the object falls on the ground, 
whatever way you look at it, it will move. It will have to move. It falls, it will not just rest at that point. It, it rolls. So we want to look at the distance it covers where it is now moving that way. How are you going to get the information or the equation for the distance it covers on the ground where it is now moving? Because the moment the object is on the ground, it has to move. Now if that is the case, it takes us to that relationship. And when we are at that point, we said when the object falls at this point, it covers this distance, it is now moving on the ground. And the distance it is covering on the ground, we call that R, and that R is known as horizontal range. So the R here is known as horizontal range. We call that horizontal range. And that horizontal range is represented by a capital R. If you want to define horizontal range, you say the horizontal range is a horizontal distance traveled or covered by the object. Anytime the object reaches, when you release an object from the height, where it reaches the ground, it will move on the ground. The distance it covers now on the ground, where it is rolling, is what we are referring to as horizontal range. How are you going to get equation for that? We already know that S equals UT, uh, S, S equals UT plus half a t square but if you can recall few minutes ago i said if you are on the ground there is no no gravity anytime you are on the ground there is no gravity don't calculate that anytime you are above the ground there is no acceleration it will be the gravity so since the object is now moving on the ground the gravity or before i even inter interpret that let me change the parameters i already know that s changes to h for the height but since the object is now moving on the ground the distance s is now becoming the range equals ut plus half a is becoming g a changes to g and we have t squared there now let us change the parameters i said anytime the object is on the ground there is no gravity so since the object is now moving on the ground the gravity here becomes zero there is no gravity if that is the case we have r equals ut plus half g is here you put zero there times t square so r is becoming ut have in mind why ut half times zero is the same as zero zero times t square is equal to zero when you multiply zero by any figure is the, the same as zero there is no meaningful result that you can get so what is left is ut plus zero here is the same as ut so you can use that formula to get the horizontal distance traveled and if you want to move further to get another equation for the horizontal distance few minutes ago I said small t equals square root of 2h divided by g. So wherever you see small t you put 2h square root of 2h divided by g. That will give me r equals ut. U now, instead of small t we put 2h over g. So that becomes u times square root of 2h divided by g. That will be the formula for the horizontal distance covered. When the object is on the ground, the distance it covers on the ground is represented by that. Super.